Welcome to In the Hot Seat with the Tenney Group. I'm Spencer Tenney. It's good to be with you. Do you want to know the truth about trucking? Well, I do, and I've got someone here in the hot seat who I think can help us. Andrew Winkler, General Manager of Chief Carriers and the host of the Driven Too Far podcast. Welcome to Hot Seat, sir. Hey, how are we doing today? Doing good, doing good. Before we heat things up a little bit, why don't you just take 30 seconds and tell us a little bit about uh, the work you're doing over there at Chief Carriers. You bet. So I'm the general manager here at Chief Carriers. We're 75 truck operation, run about 225 flatbeds. Uh, we do haul for Chief Industries. They are about 50% of our overall freight and the rest is out on the open market. I love it. All right. Well, we'll jump right in right there. So I've got to know, doing a little research with my team about your podcast and your story. Tell us, just tell, tell us the journey. How did you get to where you are right now? So I started as a student driver in 1995. So I went to the local community college and uh, got my class A. I was a young guy, 24 at the time. Didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life yet, but always liked the big trucks. So that's kind of where I started. Uh, I got on with a company here locally in Grand Island, Nebraska called Grand Island Express. Um, and I was with them for 23 years. Wow. So I had work, worked my way through the, the ranks there. And I was a vice president of operations when I left in uh, 2018. And there was a job opening. The general manager here at Chief was retiring. And I just happened to throw my resume in the in the hat there in the ring. And, and here I am today. And here you are doing some pretty fantastic things, including being named uh, best small carrier to drive for in 2023. So number one, congratulations. Thank you. Number two, how does that happen? So when I was with Grand On Express, uh, we we got um, jumped into the Best Fleets contest in 2012, and that first year we did it, um, we we didn't know what the heck we were doing. It was kind of new, and uh, what we learned about ourselves at the time was uh, we actually had a lot of good programs in place already for drivers, but we were really bad at communicating them. Hmm. So as time went on, uh, Grand Island's been. Uh, they've done very well. They've stayed in the contest now since 2012. I don't think they've ever fallen out. Um, but I was heavily involved with that. And, and then, of course, when I, when I came over here to Chief, uh, I brought that knowledge with me. And uh, it was an eye-opener. So first of all, I'd never been involved in flatbed trucking. So I had to learn that piece of the business. And then the, the culture here was just maybe a little backwards compared to what I was used to. It was very old school. Uh, everybody was siloed in the business, meaning the technicians, mm -hmm. the drivers, dispatch. Uh, so we had a lot of work to do with culture. So let so let's unpack that a little bit because that's a that's a big buzzword, culture. And you know it's one of those things that sounds good in interviews, but when you actually try to go execute on that or to affect that, it's not that easy. So to to walk us through some of the things that influence taking the business from, you know, where it was, where you just described to, you know, being an award-winning company? Well, first of all, I thought for a long time that, you know, we're anybody running a truck line out there. It seems like we've all got about the same pool of money to pay the drivers. Right. So when it comes down to it, it's the, the differentiator is really about the culture and how are you going to treat your people? How are you going to mm -hmm. take care of them? When I stepped here uh, into, into Chief, uh, we had a brand new facility. So the terminal was one month old when I took over. It was like they built it for me. It was fantastic. But uh, the, the thing I noticed right away within the first week was it, it was kind of cold in here. And one of the things they had done was all the doors were shut. The, the drivers were really isolated. They had their own entrance to come in and they were to come in and talk through a window to dispatch or maintenance. And they had a, a nice, pretty nice driver's lounge they could hang out in. Uh, but that was the first thing. I, I distinctly remember the first week I would kick the doors open and put the little wedge in the carpet in the bottom to hold them open. And an hour later, I'd come back and the doors were closed again. I says, what is going on around this place? So pulled the ops guy aside and we had a discussion. He says, well, we don't, we don't want the drivers in here. They might, they might bother us or they might see what we're doing or something. I said, oh man, this Don't has got that. to change. So I knew I had a lot of work to do from that point on. So what was a, a turning point, you know, something that you observed within the office, within the culture that you said, you know what, I think, I think that we're moving the needle. Tell us about a time where you saw something that 
hey, we're on the right track? Well, because I because I had been involved in Best Fleets um, in the past, you know, one of the tricks to that is you you go to TCA every year and you bring home the the final um, standings booklet and you kind of look through there and you can see how carriers scored. So one of the first things I did uh, that first year, probably in 2019 by then, I ran ourself, I scored ourself against the top 20 essentially. And the, the leadership team at the time, they were pretty confident, let's say, that they were running a solid truck line. But when we, we went through that as an exercise as a leadership team and they saw how far off we, we were on the mark compared to the top 20 best fleets, uh, I think that was kind of the turning point for a lot of them. It was kind of the aha moment or the eye opener, yeah. if you will. You know, and, and kudos to the leadership there because there there's a ton of companies whose leadership, you know, in my world, in, in the M&A world, there's a lot of talk about my valuation. I mean, my business is worth this, is worth this, but resist actually getting a third-party valuation because they really, in their back, you know, in, in their heart of hearts, they don't want to know if there's a disconnect between what they think is true and what's actually true. So I, I think from a leadership standpoint, I have high praise just for your company's um uh, in, you know, inviting that type of uh, yes, look inward uh, of the operations because when, once you do that, a lot of good things can happen. So, uh, so again, congrats on all the great things going on there and, and continued success. Let me transition over to your podcast. Now, you have a really unique voice. There's all kinds of different podcasts, but I really appreciate the the stories that you're telling and the, from the vantage point. So. Tell us about that. What's unique about what you're doing through your podcast? Um, and and what, what are you trying to accomplish through that? Yeah, so I'll kind of take you back to the beginning of that. And it was, uh, you know, really our marketing uh, team that kind of helps us out. They says, you know, you have a story to tell with your experience, how you started as a student driver and you have a lot to offer uh, drivers. You need to think about doing a podcast. And I says, I'm, I'm not doing a podcast. I don't even listen to the things. There's no way I'm doing this. <laughs> so, so they kept working on me and, and stuff. And, uh, I launched it in November of 22. And I said, here's the deal. We're going to go through, um, we're, we're going to set this up and, and build a persona for this because I don't want this about me. I want this to help drivers in general. Um, it wasn't going to be about chief carriers because I truly thought at 75 trucks, I was like, you know, who's going to listen to it? Maybe half of your staff mm -hmm. would listen to it. So I thought there was more to be done out there. So we developed this persona around the 30 something year old male driver, family at home, uh, torn between being home, being out on the road, making good money. Uh, and one thing I kept seeing just you know, in my almost 30 years of experience is you see drivers make the same mistakes a lot of time. And it's like, what can I do to help these guys and gals uh, so they don't have to go through all this pain and get them to a better point in their career? So that was really the premise of it is, is how can I help drivers through my own experiences and what I've seen from the executive chair? So, so tell us about the title driven too far. I mean, what, what, what about that title do you personally connect with? You know, I think it's, uh, you think about how many drivers have been in the industry and have probably left the industry. And I heard a stat here maybe six months ago or something, and they were saying, talking about the driver shortage. And it just said, uh, there's enough CDL holders in the United States to fill all the trucks right now. It's the fact that we've pushed so many of them out of the trucking industry and they've gone on to do other things, even though they still hold an active CDL. So, you know, what are we doing to these people to drive them out of the industry? That was really my main focus there. Oh, I, I love it. So um, you mentioned culture um, and, and you address culture specifically, you know, social media's impact on culture within the podcast. What, what are you observing um, as far as social media's role on culture? I think it was um, maybe a year or so, maybe two years ago, I had my own aha moment when it comes to social media and the role it plays in our industry. Uh, I was probably like every other, most other truck lines and struggling to fill the trucks and some things go on. And I thought I understood social media, but it wasn't until somebody physically drew me a picture, a digital picture of how all this stuff actually interconnects with 
SEO and Facebook and LinkedIn, and then the podcast mm-hmm. starts coming in and these things. And the for whatever reason, the light bulb finally went on. And now I understood, oh, you got to do a heck of a lot more than throw an occasional Facebook post up that you're hiring drivers. Right. No, it, it makes sense. And it really is. And, it, you know, there's so much messaging going on. It really does require quite a bit more to connect with anybody, any type of employee. So, so, um, hundred percent on that. So let's talk about big picture, 10 years, um, you know, long history with chief industries going back to 54, um, yep. chief carriers 10 years from now, what, what do you see as part of this company vision for you guys? You know, I don't know about the size of chief carriers, um, 10 years from now, I'm, I'm sure we'll continue to grow a little bit, but one thing we've seen, uh, where we are tied into the manufacturing business at Chief Industries, uh, we're about the right size to service that because we have seasonality to our freight stuff, just like anything else. Um, I, I can definitely see some growth in the brokerage side in the flatbed, flatbed world. So I think that's where the future is probably for us. I love it. All right, last question, Andrew, a little bit of a wild card here. Let's just kind of go back to that moment where you went down the path of the student driver Let's just say you pivoted at that point, never got into trucking. What would have been the alternative career path for you at that point? I think I was, I think I was that typical early 20 something that was a little bit lost. I had initially went to school for accounting. Uh, my mom was in accounting and, uh, you know, I went, got a two-year degree with that and was pursuing some things like that. And I did an internship at an accounting firm and it happened to be through tax season. I was like, oh, I can't do this sitting, <laughs> sitting, sitting in the cubicle. So I had to find something else. And I, it was going to be business something because I, I think I had some leadership qualities and I sure liked the numbers and trying to figure out new ways, better ways of doing things. So uh, it would have led me down some kind of business path regardless if it wasn't trucking. Well, Andrew, I work with CPAs every day. I think you draw, I think you dodged a bullet there. Um, <laughs> so I think well done, sir. And, 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 and again, thank you for being a voice for the truckers out there in our industry who make America move. Um, that's going to do it for us here in the hot seat. We'll see you next time. 